Welcome to the truth about beer. Uh, Episode two. Yeah. Oh, two. <laughs> oh, so what are we titling this episode, though? Well, well this Second. is the truth about beer and Julia Grady. Hello. 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 <laughs> what did you call her? What do you want to call her? I don't know. You should, I, I heard I've you had know. a lot of names. Julia Grayling. Grayling. That's my new last name. Gravy? So you like <laughs> what is your last name? Hmm. Grayling. Grayling. I was hearing Julian Gravy. I'm sorry. You heard Gravy. <laughs> Maybe I do need headphones. Should I change like my last name Julia to Gravy? Julian <laughs> Gravy. Yeah, that's what it is. I'm catchy. Huh. Did we digress good. already. <laughs> already. <laughs> Only took 30 seconds. <laughs> Doesn't take long at all. You're welcome. Yeah. So. Oh, thank you, Jack. <laughs> I think uh, Keith's going to tell us about our beer tonight. Well, we have uh, a little variety here. I'm drinking the uh, Fence Jumper Golden Ale from Uncle Bear's. <laughs> you got cords in your way over there. I love the name. No, I just spilled a little bit because I'm clumsy. <laughs> Then we got the Ocean Beach style IPA, West Coast IPA. West Coast. What are you drinking, Jack? I'm drinking choice? Mandarin wheat. Yes. How is it? Oh, it's, it's good. It tastes like uh, oranges. Nice. Which, you know, I'm guessing that's the Mandarin that's part. That's the Mandarin, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm missing whatever the wheat flavor is. Wheat. It just keeps it light. Yeah. I, I don't have which a delicate palate. Yours is as dark as the IPA, so I'm not sure how we can. <laughs> that doesn't work. I, 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 could identify, taste weedy. I couldn't identify it in a lineup, but it's delicious, actually. <laughs> Yeah, cool. So yeah, Uncle Bears is a local brewery. They're um, based out of Gilbert. Started in 2013. So I'm guessing, reading the story, I'm guessing it was based off the uh, family family dog. So, and they do. They are pet friendly, so you can bring your dog there and what? And the dog's name was Bear. Bear was it? Uncle Bear, they called him. Really? Yeah. I did not know that. That's how the bar got the name of the brewery. Interesting. They let the dogs come on in and. It reminds me of a great story that I'm not going to tell. <laughs> <laughs> Don't leave your dog there. Make sure you take him with you when you go. <laughs> Don't leave him tied up. <laughs> I'm, glad, I'm glad you brought that to everyone's attention. <laughs> Who was you? Were Just you were there. Were, that, were you not? Yeah. You were there when, yeah. Okay, so. Another local bar we were close by. Um, person, I don't know. They came in and they, they got on the microphone on stage with us and and uh, accused everyone of stealing their dog. Shut up. Were they really drunk? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Really? Yeah, but she had left Usually if somebody gets on the dog. microphone, yeah, they're she left it over. probably well, really drunk. Helps that they own the place. Oh. Um. <laughs> so it was definitely funny. Oh, my God. Yeah, it was good. It was really good. I know you guys took my dog. <laughs> I took it to you. Oh, it, was, it was awesome. It was just priceless. <laughs> so what do you do? Like, hey, crazy person. <laughs> you left your dog next door. <laughs> That's when you get security. You can escort them <laughs> off the stage, please. Yeah. Good times. Yeah. Tagline. Come sit and stay for a dog on boot time. Oh, oh there's the dog. Dog. Speaking the dog. dog right He's there. here. You, you guys did take him, didn't you? <laughs> uh, so I didn't get a chance to listen to you guys' first podcast, but I saw a little tidbits on the video stuff, whatever. It looked interesting. It was about snakes. Yeah. Very cool. Did you sure. learn something new about snakes? Joey did. I did. What did you know? Um, what to do if you get bit by a rattlesnake? <laughs> what do you do? <laughs> well, let's crying. say you get bit on the arm. Okay. Mm-hmm. Well, then you want to elevate your arm. That makes sense. Try to get the blood to flow through your body quicker to dissipate. Dispense oh. it throughout the body. Oh, so you want the venom to dissipate. Yeah. Yes. So, like, I learned that tourniquets are bad. a bad and very thing bad. of the past. Is there venom caustic that. or something? Does it dissolve things? Is that why? No, it, it actually, because most of the venom that's here in mm-hmm. Arizona is hemotoxic venom. Oh, okay. So if you put a tourniquet on, it's going to isolate the venom and Kill it rots your body. flesh yeah. that much quicker. Oh, my so, God. Yeah, it's pretty, I'm never living in the house That's how I take care of it. <laughs> Where does snakes live? Outdoors? Cool. I'm here. But it was exciting. You know, it, it came in handy, though, when we played at Santan Flat last week because you oh, saw yeah, a snake and yeah. you knew what it was. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Keith, like, come tell me what kind of I snake knew this is. No, I'm like, <laughs> my wife's like, there's a snake right there, and she just hops over it. I'm like, oh, yeah, there's a snake. It was, it was crawling across the ground by the gate. We're unpacking all our stuff and bringing it out to the cars. So and I heard you say... It's not venomous because it has a pointy tail. So you learn. Yeah, from I, I learned that too. Well, I asked him. It said it have a blunt tail or a pointy tail. Right. Oh. 
And he said, he's got a ponytail. I wonder, I wonder <laughs> why you asked that. I, was like, I really I need to like read it. I need to watch your guys' podcast. <laughs> You'll learn a lot. Actually. Yeah, I really yeah, need to. And then come to our game. Yeah, I need to know these things. <laughs> well, today we're going to learn about Julia. Yeah. And why she's so darn talented. Oh. I inherited it. <laughs> no, I didn't. No, I grew up with it. Though. My dad was in a recording band in the 70s called Hartsfield. So I kind of was like the toddler on stage when they were still jamming with like a tambourine. And I just naturally took to it. Actually, he didn't really push it on me. I think when I was like around 10, I started picking up the guitar and strumming it, but I knew nothing. So it was just noise. So he's like, here's free falling. Learn how to play it. Come back to me when you can sing it and play it at the same time. I'll show you something else. So I came back to him and I was like, I can sing it and play it at the same time. And then I rearranged the chords so I can, I wrote a new song out of it. Oh, wow. I was like, oh. So how old were you when you wrote your first so, song then? 13. Wow. Yeah. And he was like, here's some more chords. <laughs> Go nuts. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, I couldn't play it. I kind of remember it in my head just because I don't really forget, you know, most of them. Well, it was yours, so nobody could accuse you of doing it wrong. Yeah. I mean, it was a little shitty, but hey, it had potential. It was 13. <laughs> it wasn't that good, but, you know. But it was good for your first song, I guess. Sorry, yeah. Yeah, what was it about? Do you remember? It was called Black Jacket, White Hair Bow, and it was probably about some boy in junior high. I actually know exactly who it was about. Hi, Eric. <laughs> I was say, there's no way you some boy. Yeah, no, there's no, no, no. Was about, yeah. I will make sure he listens to this too. He'll love it. <laughs> Get all embarrassed. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so then you so, grew up yeah. in, Sh- in Chicago? Chicago. Area? In Chicago. Yeah. I lived there um, until I was 18. My whole family moved to um, the East Valley, Gilbert. And um, I was here briefly and then I ran away to Los Angeles at 19 because I'm a a daredevil. I'm a rebel. And I lived there. A rebel. I lived there for three miserable years. I'm kidding. I loved it. I lived there for three years. And then, you know, I was starving. And I was like, eh, maybe come back to Arizona. And I love it here, too. So. Very cool. Yeah. yeah. I bet you made some really good connections there. I did. And Absolutely. So who were some of the people that you met there that? Well, hmm. let me think about what I could talk about here. Man. <laughs> Do you, go to, do you go there often still? Do you still go to LA on a regular basis? You know, uh, I was. So last summer I started going to Los Angeles um, back and forth a little bit. I was working with um, a hit songwriter named Billy Steinberg. Mm-hmm. And we were, you know, doing some co-writing together. And we're still in touch. It's, you know, but it's been really cool and I've learned a lot from him. Um, more recently I've been going to Santa Barbara. Well, near Santa Barbara. Um, working with Christopher Ting, who is a Phoebe, uh, a Phoebe and film composer. <laughs> He's a TV and film composer, and um, he uh, one of his most famous things. He did the Futurama theme song, which is oh, pretty wow. sweet. Oh, that's yeah, wild. yeah. Cool. Well, Billy's no Suits. slouch either. He does um, Rescue Me, the OC. Oh wow! Yeah, and, I mean the guy's just—he's brilliant. So we're working on a new project. We're in the really early stages. There's a lot, you know, to be done and put in, but. But it's cool so far. That's cool. Yeah, I'm excited. Well, he's saying Billy Steinberg's no slouch either. Billy so, Steinberg is not a slouch. <laughs> he, he wrote did write <laughs> Colors <laughs> yeah. and uh, Like a Virgin. Like a Virgin too. He wrote I, I Touch know. Myself. <clears throat> then there was a oh, Bengals song. Said, there's yeah. something there, but I'm not going there. <laughs> Eternal <laughs> Flame was it? Eternal, Eternal Flame. Flame. He gets yeah, he gets a little risque. Yeah. Yeah. He wrote True Colors. Eternal, also yeah. wrote Eternal Flame. That's so cool. Isn't that cool? That's two of my favorite lovely little pretty songs. <laughs> yeah. No, he's brilliant. I mean. There are endless things I have to learn from that guy, <laughs> you know. Yeah. But, that's weird. That's so, uh, yeah, that's been my most recent stuff. But, you know, as a musician, I've worked with all kinds of people. I was in France four years ago working with um, James Sanger, producer. And, uh, you know, we recorded some songs together. And I'm just kind of meeting everybody and working with everyone and crossing my fingers. <laughs> so are you, are you, is, your, is your goal or I guess is your dream to be a performer, entertainer, or a published writer or what like there's so many guys that write to write tons of stuff that have tons of mm-hmm. influence on the industry that we've never heard of right so the dream would actually be to write songs and perform them because yeah. i mean you know my first love is probably songwriting no it's definitely songwriting <clears throat> performing comes in though pretty close right. so i mean 
it wouldn't be bad if I was a songwriter and I was writing for other people. Right. It doesn't mean I don't, you know, I'm not going to perform ever again. But No, I think most of the songwriters still perform their tunes even though they absolutely. sound like Yeah. Just sort of that thrill of Billy having, somebody does else, it. having somebody else take your mm -hmm. art turn it to life. Totally. And yeah. Yeah. Be able I mean, to do that on your own. So that's yeah. pretty cool. I'll take whatever this industry is willing to give me. <laughs> yeah. Did you pay for any of it? That's even better. I knew I was gambling with my entire life when I decided to be a songwriter, but <laughs> so I'm like, I'll do anything. <laughs> so, so what is the writing process for you? Like, how, how do you... Typically, it happens really fast. I don't really overthink it. Sometimes I do. I mean, now that I've learned, you know, different exercises and, you know, kind of ways to write and... Um, how to structure things from these songwriters, I'm I'm applying that, so I'm putting in work that I've not really ever done before. But, you know, my whole life, it's been like a moment, and I just kind of, it's like throwing up. I'm just like, ah, there's a song. So it's typically- Really fast. So yeah. it's lyrics first for you, or- It or, depends. Or music first? It can go either way. Really? I don't know if one is more than the other, to be honest. And I write the most in my car. And it's always been that way. Now, do, do you record it? I do. Okay, I was going to yeah. say, because like, the worst thing is that, like having a liquor or a thought or a yeah. lyric go through your head and then never be able to remember to hear right. it. Right. Even as a group. Yeah. We yeah. had a great parody song going. Mm -hmm. Right. And not a single one of us can remember what it was. Right. We just know we were all rolling on the floor laughing. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. Like, what was the funniest yeah. thing ever? What was it? I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. Oh, no, I always record it just in case. But That's I cool. typically, like, if I didn't have anything to record it on, which... I have a phone, yeah. so I always have something. Yeah, but um, <laughs> if I didn't, I if I say something out loud a few times, I pretty much remember it. That's cool. Um, so that that came in handy. So not an exceptional amount of drug use in your life. No. <laughs> Clearly. So far, just kidding. I don't have that. <laughs> I can remember it just thinking about. It. Yeah. What happened? <laughs> yeah, I think I've I've tried to write in the past, and I usually come up with an idea, I'll jot it down, and then I get writer's block. I can't go yeah. any further than yeah. that. I'll have a a verse and that's it. Yeah. And I have a whole notebook full of that. And <laughs> I like, Writer's block is torture. And when I have it, it, it doesn't last very long. I don't know why. I'm just really lucky. You know? Some can, some can. It'll be like a month. And I'm like, oh, it's been a month. Wow. Yeah. Because I'm just like cranking them out, you know, mm -hmm. as often as I can. And uh, so many of them, I don't even play. But yeah. I wrote mm -hmm. them. That's cool. And they come back later sometimes. So how know? many songs do you think you've written so far? I... Honestly, don't even think I'd be able to guess. Well, it's been a, a few hundred for sure. Wow. For sure. I mean, if I started on 13, I'm 28, and I've been writing like pretty much daily. <laughs> That's right. Six There's or seven hundreds years of songs. songs. Yeah. Really? And I remember like a lot, a good chunk from when I was really young, even though I haven't heard it for years. You know, like certain things I'll forget, but That's cool. it's weird. I mean, yeah. are they all documented somehow? I mean, Some as of far them. as Most of them written are. down yeah. words? And Most of them are. I have to like dig through things, but you know. I'm, mm -hmm. high school trapper yeah. keeper. I'm sure there's some <laughs> gems out there though that like just happened and I forgot about it and that sucks. So that's why I'm, you know, I am trying to like have a spot where everything goes. That's the fun. place. 42 the years place. I've written one song. <laughs> My iPhone. And it took me that 40, long. what now? It's 42 years I've written one song. Oh no. Oh it, dear. It's hard. It's <laughs> a hard yeah. process. It really is. I mean, it just comes natural for you, but you yeah, know, it's, it really does. I don't know. I would not have put myself through the torture of being a, a tortured artist, you know, if it didn't come naturally. I mean, yeah. I just know it. It just makes sense. That's cool. So, so I'm stuck like this, I guess. <laughs> not necessarily a bad thing. <laughs> no, it's know. not. I love it. I love it. <laughs> well, I think we should hear some. Would you like I, to I hear would, something? That'd be great. Yeah. Cool. That'd be wonderful. What kind of song would you like to hear? Hmm. Well, what are you really happy about right now? Happy? I mean, that... Uh, you think I'm writing a happy song? <laughs> no. <laughs> He's like, I would hope that you have a happy song. Um, well, um, something that expresses you something right that now that... I like just play the most depressing thing I have. Isn't that cool? That, that's, kind of, that's a piece of art there. Mm. You know, I am typically kind of a depressing writer, but not always. Um, Those are the best ones ever. They are. I mean, you like mean, write something happy. I'm like, I don't know what that means. Do something happy and happy. Yeah. You mean crap? You want me to write a piece of crap? Right. That yeah. Five <laughs> seconds. Yeah. That, that's oh, essentially what that, that marketability stuff, that's the mm. part that I think I couldn't handle. So yeah. we need something. We need a, something I know. upbeat. It's like, you me. I, no. <laughs> it's like, uh, Just, you, you I'm not feeling upbeat. Like, you know, 90% of the time I'm... <laughs> 
But you know what's great about the industry today, I think it's changed so much over the years, is that back in the day when you got a record deal, you dealt with the producer, you, you did what they wanted you to do. Right. And now there's so many platforms to get your music right. out there, you can do whatever you want. Oh yeah, there's no right. self-produce. Yeah, I mean, yeah you could. Self-produce. It's a good thing and a bad thing. I mean, it's uh, oversaturated. Exactly. Yeah. There's a lot Yeah, getting of enough of an audience to make talent. yourself viable is yeah. really tough. Absolutely. And especially because, this is going to sound awful, but it's just the truth, that the, the, what's accepted is quality has dumbed down. I mean, like... That's true. So much top 40 stuff is essentially Wiggles tunes. You know what I mean? It's just, <laughs> rep- just repetition. Yeah. Find something that sounds kind of catchy mm-hmm. and then just repeat it 900 times and yeah. throw a different word in there. Right. And that, but it's just yeah. such the same, same, right. same. And that's I, popular. Yeah. And that's... I'm trying to find that, that balance way. of like... It's hard. Keep it like that because people don't want to overthink it. Yeah. I do. I love overthinking. Well, that's the thing. I can't wait. You could be a cerebral artist, but yeah. you're going to have a small audience. Right. Because you know, I don't want a small audience. That's the hard thing. <laughs> yeah. You know, so uh, I'm trying to find that like middle ground of I'm still being true to myself and what I would normally write about. Maybe I do dumb down the lyrics a bit, but they're still meaningful. You know, right. that's kind of where I'm at. I've got, you know, just this, I'm that's all cool. over the damn place. <laughs> <laughs> that's okay. It's okay. It's but it's fun. <laughs> we'll play something up being peppy. I will. <laughs> this is actually kind of a beat. Is it happy? No, but... Okay. This is a new one. Because why not? Let's go with something new. Fresh. I don't like it. I want to use my fingers. Okay. <laughs> um, okay. This is um, my favorite theme, which is my gnawing desire to never be in a relationship again. Oh. <laughs> Ever. <laughs> um... <laughs> That good, huh? Yeah. <laughs> it, it was inspired by a friend that like basically asked me out. Let me check your mic real quick. Oh yeah, go ahead. <laughs> he said I'd like to take you out sometime. I said I don't do days but things anyway. And then he said, How about ask friends? I laughed and replied, I wasn't born yesterday. But he looked me in the eyes With a smile on his face Shook his head a couple times and said Touche Cause I don't wanna be hey, Anybody's anything anymore I don't wanna be alone yeah. There's so much of myself to explore and get to know hey, This girl is looking out for her own heart I don't wanna know there's something with somebody to start then fall apart He said, I find you so interesting And what's the harm in getting to know me? I told him I could write a novel explaining why going out for drinks might sound like a harmless time But drinks turn to dinner, dinner turns to more wine Next thing you know, we're close beneath the moonlight And if it's just one time, I guess it's fine But you'll develop feelings and I'll suppress mine Cause I don't wanna be, hey, anybody's anything anymore And I wanna be alone, yeah There's so much of myself to explore and get to know, hey This girl is looking out for her own heart I don't want another something with somebody to start and fall apart. Hey, start and fall apart. Yeah, he looked me in the eyes and said, you're always this way. I said, you don't know me at all. He said, that's your fault. And I said, touche, but I don't want to be. Anybody's anything anymore I don't wanna be alone Yeah, there's so much of myself to explore And get to know Hey, this girl is looking out for her own heart I don't wanna know there's something with somebody To start and fall apart It'll start, it'll fall apart I'm gonna say no, <laughs> but um, 
I don't know. I kind of explore many genres. The and, flow of that. The yeah. flow of those lyrics and everything. Right. Really cool. yeah. I can yeah. I can sing fast. <laughs> yeah, there's yes, one song Sometimes. that you do. <laughs> what? I don't even know what it's called, but I, I remember it's got a lot of words that you fit into a very yeah. I got a small. I had a lot. Of words. I know what it might be. <laughs> I have a couple of them. There's a few. I gotta do more of that. The kids like it. Well, it's, an, it's impressive. It's impressive. It's that you're to listen for. Yeah, it's like, really fun to write too, because like you just cram a bunch of words in, but like you know, there's more of a just more more to say. I find it intriguing, and, and I find it interesting and, and nice that even in those places where you said all those words, I could understand what they were. Right. Oh, good. I knew what you were saying. I'm really happy about that. You should be, because it's a. Big, I mean, it's a big deal. Because as I turn yeah. more and more into an old guy, <laughs> I find myself doing that stuff that my mother used to do. Like, I can't understand what you're saying. Uh, now, just you're mumbling your words, and I don't know yeah, what you're saying. Yeah. I find myself thinking that right. with the right. music. I'm like, what did he say? What's he saying? I don't yeah. understand. So oh, it was yeah. nice. It was nice to good. Have I'm fast, glad. Fast lyrics, so I still know what you're talking about. Yep. Perfect. Yeah. Well, That's mother, because my parents did the exact same my thing. My mother's not Jewish. <laughs> She's not yeah. Jewish. So is your mother Jewish? She I totally mumble Jewish. too, so they're just always like. Yeah. I know I do. I don't know. Well, that's the thing. It's like I think it's a maybe it's a family thing. I don't know because I get that from my mom all the time. Yeah. I like, can't understand you. Yeah. <laughs> Clearly, we don't understand. I think understand it's just an aging thing. I don't know. It, it's happening to me though. Right oh, now, I'm getting old. You're the music. Like, oh, you this is just noise. Chance. This music's just noise. What is this? <laughs> oh, it's noise. I love it. That's it. Okay, now can you do a, now do a sad one? Yeah, you want a sad one? I like sad. Oh God. Oh shit. Real depression. Oh, how sad are we going? Uh-huh. Should we go like straight depression? Well, how do you, how's your voice feeling? Are you feeling like can you do a big a big song or maybe just an emotional song doesn't have to necessarily be vocally big? Because hmm. I, I don't know. I'm a little I'm a little on the horse side. Yeah, so I don't want I don't want to. But I mean, you know, nothing, but. usually that goes away once you start doing. Are you hope? Right. <laughs> um. All right. I want a sad song. That's too sad. Oh, this one's too oh no, but you can't say too sad. There's no too sad. All right. I love to well, cry. Well, you know... If you can make me cry, that's... Okay. Just like I'm cool. actually going to go with an actual, like, just song that I wrote when I was definitely dealing with some... Oh, cool. Straight up depression. Okay. It's very folky, and um, it was a it was in the moment. Like, there was no stop in this song, and I've not changed a, a thing of it. I'm in. It came out this way, pretty much stayed this way. It's been a while, so bear with me. I don't 
coping mechanism <laughs> you know for sure I mean I think that's why I write sad songs it's not that I can't write happy songs I totally have well yeah because they're easy but but when you're when I'm sad it's like I just there's no I have no other option it just yeah. happens you know what I mean no it's therapeutic yeah, yeah. yeah it is but do you think you and maybe I'm wrong but do you think you reach more people by writing sad songs I mean I don't it's, know. it's more of a personal connection I think with sure. sad songs well it depends, on, it depends on how sad you're talking because yeah. right. the, the key I think to getting into I guess more popular stuff whatever is taking it and, and sort of almost dumbing it down like that's a very very personal very real experience right. for anyone yeah. who's been through anything like that right. um, is going to feel that 100% right. yes. and, and those people are all in it and you matter. know what I have I play that every now and again at shows it just it really depends on the crowd and, and yeah. really how much I care at that point <laughs> <laughs> but I have I played it and I almost always have people come up to me at least one person that's like man I needed yeah, that like no shit and it was really personal it was about a very specific night and you know exactly what I was experiencing but it's still relatable mm-hmm. I mean people are suffering with all kinds of stuff I can't just write happy things. It's not fair. Right. You know, we need right. to like, we need to connect with each other. And yeah. I think art is one of the best ways to do that. Well, it's amazing how therapeutic music really is. Oh my right? gosh. I mean, it's yeah. Incredible. Yeah. And like, you know, you, you get a little depressed and people are like, put on happy music. No, no, no. I don't want that. It doesn't right. match my mood. I want to be understood. And so when you hear something like that, you know, well, it's funny because it I'm, I'm, you know, I'm a broken human being myself and, and like that kind of stuff. It brings me joy. Yeah. I love to yeah. cry. Right. Like, I that's my favorite emotion is well, sadness. Like, I love a movie. I kind of like it too. <laughs> if it makes me cry, I want that. I want it. It's yeah. That's where misery loves company. Right, you know, right. Right. So. You know, right. Without a doubt. That's like, true. I'm, mm-hmm. Some dudes get the jet. They like the amped up. They want to feel amped up. I hate feeling that. I hate feeling mm-hmm. anger and like ready to go like football, you know. Ooh, anger's a bad emotion. In the tunnel thing. <laughs> well, it's not necessarily bad for everybody. Yeah, that's Whatever, true. Everyone has their own thing, their own chemical response to uh-huh. it. And like, getting jacked up like this time to fight we're in the tunnel rose bowl kind of thing i right. hate that feeling yeah i hate it <laughs> yeah but i love to cry mm-hmm. and it's a good thing yeah. so yeah if, the, if music brings you that and right. other people need that high energy stuff i guess that's why grindcore works but, right you know everyone's yeah. got their thing yeah and that's true i mean everybody's different you know maybe there are almost definitely a bunch of people out there that like said, do listen to music when they're sad oh, yeah. right. it doesn't right. make sense to me i love well, that. i'll, I'll seek out i'll seek out really depressing stuff oh me too yeah. I love when it. i in and i don't have to be in a bad mood <laughs> and it doesn't necessarily put me in a bad mood <laughs> yeah. but i want to legitimately cry yeah right. it's it's messed up it's when human. you're in that happy place you're you're there basically mm-hmm. you know when you're when you're down mm-hmm. you know you, you know, it can only go up. Well, hopefully. Yeah. You hopefully, know, hopefully. Yeah. <laughs> so that's. Well, you gotta try and make it go up, and so yeah. like whatever, yeah, whatever makes you feel better, you know. Yeah. That moment. Which yeah, I think crying is a good idea. I, you know, it's. Let it out. Everyone's chemical balance is different. And that's, that's true. Well, I'm that way with learn. movies now because yeah. as I get older, I cry more. Oh my yeah. gosh. I like movies yeah, that I, make I, me I cry. Really it's weird. Yeah, it's I like, love it. I yeah. can't wait. I'm like, what depressing movie can I watch tonight yeah, exactly. so I could just cry it out? Well, that's just what, that's <laughs> that, that's what makes it that's what makes it good for me because it, because that is my favorite emotion, and I recognize that. So yeah, I seek stuff out that to a certain degree. And, right. and mm-hmm. since being married, obviously my wife is different than I am. Um, she doesn't want to watch the sad stuff, and I. For the longest time, I didn't understand why. Till I watched a sad movie with her, and oh my goodness, like I like to cry. Yeah. She she weeps and she weeps painfully. The, oh my gosh. The, oh, wow. Like you can't even imagine. You can't even imagine. Really. I, I almost want to, so to everyone to experience hates it. it. She hates it. Yeah. She doesn't like to be sad. She doesn't yeah. like and and when it's like that, man, it's it's just crazy. <laughs> 
Yeah. We watched uh, What Dreams May Come together. Oh. Which fantastic that was a movie. Deep movie, yeah. Fantastic movie. I loved it. Movie. She loved it. And it was distracting how much she cried. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah. Oh, my. She is overwhelmed by it. Some yeah, people it, just it, immediately get like well, compassion she, fatigue. They she's, can't handle it. She's super, imp- she's super empathic anyway. I so, like that as well. Yeah. Getting, it can be a lot sometimes. There's a level where she can't take it. Yeah. I found it, so I don't invite her to watch that kind of stuff. <laughs> like, I have to cry tonight, so you just do your thing. And you know, you know, we got our time. I'm going to watch you know. the There was a preview for my, uh, A Dog's Purpose came on and we just looked at each other and went no yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. She's yeah. Yeah. I left over there yeah. she's tearing up and I'm tearing up I'm like no when I wasn't no. Yeah. Yeah. except <laughs> Beverly Hills Chihuahua I was able to watch that oh that's a horrible movie I have never seen that movie you don't need to <laughs> I was like I genuinely like this movie you guys <laughs> it's, it's everything that you imagine it's gonna be it's Beverly Hills just Chihuahua just by the title <laughs> yeah I'm sure just that's a little entitled Chihuahua like yeah. with pearls on its <laughs> neck like screw you giant <laughs> steaming pile of you know Fun for the whole family. <laughs> so I know we're going to get questions. Do you have your music available for people to listen to if I they do. wanted to? Yeah, Where can absolutely. they find that? To make it simple, <laughs> go to Julia, J-U-L-I-A, Grayling, G-R-A-Y-L-I-N-G, oh. dot com. And it's just direct links to all my social media. SoundCloud has a lot of cool stuff that I worked on in France. And like I said, I'm in the process of some new stuff. So in the meanwhile, I might... Throw throw up some, you know, new things that I recorded on my phone, <laughs> and try to make it sound decent. I might, and but you know, there's 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 a lot of material that over and the years. Your YouTube stuff's available on there. So YouTube, yep. Yeah. I was just gonna say you're, to everything. you're significantly younger than we are, so I imagine the earliest things you did are available somewhere on the internet. Uh, yeah, definitely. If you really I, search. Yeah, that's <laughs> the thing. Like, there's an old public access show. From right. my, my early twenties, that somebody sent me one time, it was horrifying. <laughs> I didn't know it existed. I didn't know it was on the internet. It was terrifying. Yeah. Um, hasn't surfaced again. And uh, oh good, yeah. I need to. No. <laughs> yeah. I, need to dig I don't. I don't like to listen no, to that. Don't. I'm really hard on teenage version of me. I'm like, Dude, oh, well, that well, note. Well, oh, it's yeah. And you know, I'm like, what I were you doing? And it's the like, last <laughs> thing I want to do is hear myself. <laughs> Poor me, I'm learning. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't mean to define that video and. Oh, Put it on a projector when we're on stage one night. If you are ready to end your life, that's a good, that's a good goal to have. Oh, it's, yeah. Yeah, here's the story of Jack's life. <laughs> it's a, it's a, it's a nice little snapshot. When I was thin. When I was thin. <laughs> yeah, I was, I was, looked like I had cancer. Thin. Really? Yeah. I was really thin. I was a teenager. Like natural, yeah. Yeah, well, I was, I hadn't gotten fat, fat yet, you know. So, I had a, a nice little arc. Nice uh, now, now I'm just the old guy body shape changing it's like I'm not getting fatter but my pants don't fit what's going on I don't understand well your waist is moving how does that happen I don't know you look very the inverted uh, I'm in my late 20s now so like my metabolism is definitely not what it was oh, you I, know? I had a 36 inch waist in. I had a 36 inch waist and then it was a 38 and then I haven't gained I haven't gained any weight I haven't gained or lost any this weight is, yeah. but my pants size keep changing <laughs> what's going on <laughs> Like, maybe they're, maybe they're just making shorter, pants. Right? I don't know. Like a 42 is comfortable. Like, that's not cool. It's <laughs> not cool. We'll definitely put a link to your website up on the, on yes. the podcast so people can go visit it. I for love sure. that. Visit me. And you do some really cool, just self produced videos. That you like them? I do, yeah. They're yeah. pretty amazing. Thank you. I appreciate that because I yeah. am using a phone. Some of them are like this really old iPad iPad. You yeah. have a drone yet? I do not have a drone. No. It's just me and the phone right now. I had a MacBook once. It yeah. broke. And because I'm a musician, I'm not buying a new one right now. So I am using my $1,000 iPhone. Thank you, Apple, for that. Um, but you know, it works. You gotta work with what you have. One of my favorite bands is Modest Mouse. I grew up listening to them. I just, I know all of it. But they, I mean, they were like making instruments as kids, like out of like scraps and stuff. You make it work. You know, if if you want to make art, you'll make art. I wish I had, you know, the proper equipment to really, like, produce what's in my head. Not that I really could anyway, because I just, you know, that's not my, my strength necessarily. But, you know, but I enjoy it. And it's fun. That's cool. It's the best I could do to get it. <laughs> it's a passion. Did you yeah. see the YouTube, uh, not YouTube, but Facebook video of the guy who made a guitar out of a shovel? No. Did you see that? Did you? I, I think I yeah, sent you that link. That was pretty cool. Yeah. <laughs> he actually used a guitar. Yeah. 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 That's amazing. Yeah. 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 Very cool. Yeah. 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 That's a little I'm not that handy, you know. There's a cigar box one, and then there's the washtub guys. Yeah. 
It's just, you know, it's a variations on an old thing. It's cool. So you can make one out of a bandana. Yeah. Blah, blah. I think that's yours. That's mine. It was just like falling off my head. I just realized it. I thought, get rid of this guy. What's it for? What's the purpose? I don't know. So aside from music, you yes. know, what, what, uh, what occupies your brain? <laughs> um, quite a few things. Oh, wow. Yeah, that's a big one. What <laughs> yeah. occupies your brain? I don't know. What's yeah. going on right now? I have no idea, you guys. No, I have, I have a lot of things. Read. Actually, this is funny because um, like careers, music, hobby, psychology. Oh, we're friends. I it's know. so bad. Yeah, I literally <laughs> just will be up all night reading about different mental illnesses. Like, oh, wow, you know, what do you know? <laughs> <laughs> interesting. That's cool. Yeah, I love it. It's just so interesting. It did really you, is. Did you see any, I don't know if you watched the YouTube, the psychology, um, what is that series called? There's a whole series of psychology um, things on YouTube, and uh, it's like psychology 101. I can't think Psych of it. Psych to go. Is it them? I don't, I don't, know, I don't think it's a guy sitting in a chair and there's some little graphics that they do with it. They make it really kind of corny and dumbed down, but it's really cool. They go through. I think that might be it. They go through like everything. I don't know if this one's corny. I it's have like it. Too. Yeah, it's just drawings. I know it's it really, it really is cool though. I mean, and not only is it just, you know, interest me, but why are we not forced to learn about all of this? Why aren't these, our why aren't these the people lives? that are in charge of things? Like I mean, sociologists and yeah. psychologists, and people who understand people. Right. What motivates people? What moves people? People what, can't you know. even help one another because they they only know their way, and it's like you have to you gotta understand everyone's brain is slightly different, mm -hmm. you know. And then you add in things like chemicals, yeah, and environments, absolutely, and all sorts of stuff. Absolutely, and everything everything changes it just right. a little bit. I have ADHD. And I've had it my whole <clears throat> life, and still in this day and age, people, people are like, "It's not real. It's just your imagination." No, it's really not. I'm super productive, and I just cannot stay on task. It's a legitimate so, chemical. It's a legitimate chemical. chemical. I think that's one of the biggest problems today is, you know, instead of understanding what's causing the issues, they just put you on medication. Well, the problem just, with that, the problem sometimes with the that's what you need. The medication right. works it does. a lot of times. The funny thing is, that is was that my, that because was me. <laughs> they are self-medicating people. Right. right. There's such subtle differences, and they're being prescribed by people who don't necessarily have any idea what it's like to be that person. Absolutely. I can diagnose what you're going through, but I don't know what you're going through. I, I have no idea what it's like to be in your head. Yeah. So, but I'm going to give you this pill because somebody else told me it works. Right. You have and, to be self-aware about it. And you have to like incredible. be real with yourself. Is this working or is it not? Yeah. And the risk is it's changing you. Right. So how aware you can be of the changes that it's made to you. Yeah. Sometimes difficult to impossible. Right. So when they do the whole like side effects may include if you notice this, it's like well, if I noticed any of this yeah. crap, yeah. I probably would have gotten where I got to in the first place. <laughs> I wouldn't have been in the shower with a bottle yeah. of pills and the jack the handles if I'd been able to notice those things. Right. No, I mean <laughs> when it works for you, it is great and it is life changing. So I, I I have to segue into this because I'm really excited to talk about it. Um, <laughs> probably what I was about. Yeah, I, I think so. <laughs> segue away. So, you know, one of the uh, topics that one of the series that we're doing right now with our podcast is is on fear, mm -hmm. and we did the fear of snakes was the last time was the first podcast we did, but um, Joey and I are both really intrigued by paranormal, and we understand that you had a little uh, experience with that a little bit. recently. Yeah. You care to share? I that? did. Yes, I will share. Um, okay, so I'm like, so I'm gonna put the guitar down. <laughs> um, my birthday was May thirtieth. The night before my birthday, I've got a really good friend, and she um, she was a single mom, and she had to work an overnight shift at her job, and uh, she's like, can you watch the kids? She's got three kids, right? It's ages. Like, well, this I'm gonna get it wrong. I wrote it in the thing. I had to really figure that out. But it's like nine, six, and five. Eight, six, and five, something wrong along those lines. She'll look it up. Nah, doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> they're under 10. Close <laughs> They're babies. No, but they're little. And I'm like, yeah, I'll stay overnight with them. No problem. I love these kids. Oh, my gosh. My friend moved into a house when she was very young, somewhere in the East Valley. And that's when it started for her. She started having these paranormal experiences as a, as a really young kid. And they got worse and worse and worse. And they never stopped. So even though she's moved, she's lived in different states. You know, she's 30 years old now. Never stopped. And I know this about her. And there's been experiences. And, you know, I've met her, like, childhood friends that are like, oh, man, we've seen some stuff. Regardless, I would have believed her. I mean, I'm kind of already a believer in that. But it's been her life. And now that her kids are getting a little, you know, a little bit older. And, well, even when the little one was two, she started talking about all kinds of weird ghosty stuff. And you're like, yeah, it's a kid, but no. You know, so these kids are having uh, weird experiences and... I know about it, and I didn't really think about it because I've known her for so long when I went to go watch them. And to be honest with you, I never, and as somebody that really loves spooky stuff too, 
I never in my wildest dreams thought I'd have an experience even close to this. That's the, I mean, that's how ridiculous it was. So I went to watch them, um, and we were having a normal night. The little one, the youngest, she, uh, talks about Summer, who is her imaginary friend. We call it the imaginary friend. She says that she's not imaginary, she's just not alive. But she's been talking about Summer since she was two, right? And, you know, now she's six years old, and she still describes it exactly the same. Since she was two, like, just the wow. physical features, everything. There's something about Summer liking wood. We don't really know what that means. We keep asking her, and she's like, I just need wood, you know? So she's, like, looking for Summer, and we haven't heard her talk about it in a while. And we're like, I'm like, you know, no, don't get worked up about it. Her older sister gets way more freaked out. She's just like, I don't want to talk about it. I'm like, let's, you know, let's move on, guys. So we do, and that's that. Sometime later, we um, were in her mom's bedroom, and I was playing guitar for them. The youngest, who was talking about her imaginary friend, got this, like, glazed-over look on her face. And she's just kind of like, almost like a, a trance. And that happens to her sometimes. Hmm. Um, and she just, she just walked to the window. So, you know, a balcony leading out from her bedroom. Just walked to the window. The blinds weren't open, so it's not like she saw something. And she just opened the blinds and goes, there's a ghost out there. And I was like, Annabelle, you're just, you're, you know, you're getting worked up because, uh, you know, you were talking about your imaginary friend, ghost person, and all this stuff. And then the middle one goes over to the window <laughs> She turns and looks at me, and you know, like, kids can get overdramatic because it's kind of fun to, like, play with that, and it's mm-hmm. like, you know, and they're like, you know, the attention, it's like, oh, right. that's scary. It was not like that at all. This middle one looks at me, and she's like, had this just look of horror on her face. I've never seen a look like that in a child. Wow. So I started getting like, oh, shit. Like, this is actually, <laughs> oh, man, I had to be here for it. And then the oldest one, who would normally be the most freaked out and screaming and stuff, walks over, looks out, and says nothing. I was like, this is so wrong. So I, I go and look, and there was what you might describe as a ghost. Um, it was a balcony across from us. Not too far, but, you know, like a parking lot away, maybe. But um, it, was, it wasn't actually a person's balcony. It was like this, you know, like leading to their front door. So it's like two front doors, and in the middle of those doors was the most massive figure I've ever seen in my life. I was logically trying to figure out if a human could be that tall. I mean... We would know about this human. Like, it was that big. And it wasn't just tall. It was wide. And I don't know. I mean, we all saw it. We all just stood there. And I froze. And I, like, almost had a heart attack. And then, you know, it clicked that I am responsible for three young children right now. And they are priority number one. (laughs) So that might actually be what kept me going. (laughs) I don't know how I would have reacted if it was just me. Um... So I told them to get out of the room. I was like, go, oh, go in the living room. And I'm, like, not demanding at all with kids. I have no idea how to do that, you know? They walk all over me. <laughs> I'm like, get out of here. They were like, okay. Because I, I, I don't know what's happening. You know, I go out. I'm, like, pacing around. Midnight hits. My parents are like, happy birthday on FaceTime. And I'm sitting over with the kids, and we're all just like, you guys, are, you guys are all right over there? I was like, we had a lot, we had a lot of incident. You know, my mom knows about my friend's history. And right. She's like, oh, it was. I'm like, no, mom. Seriously, listen to me real quick. <laughs> it is. It was. She's like, do you want me to come there? I'm like, I don't want you even, I don't need to drive here. Absolutely not. Like, you know, but there is something going on. And then I just, you know, you go back and forth. I'm like, this is not real. It's just, it can't be real. There has to be a logical explanation. It was just, it was, it was too ridiculous. So um, I had to calm down the kids and they were, you know, watching a movie. I went back to go see if it was still there. I mean, this is easily, like, a half hour later, 45 minutes later or something. And I I looked out the window, it's still there. And the oldest one walks up. I was like, oh, I don't want you to be in here. I don't want, I don't want you to be scared. She, and I wasn't looking out the window at that time. I was looking at her, and she just goes, it's moving now. And now I'm thinking, okay, now you're getting worked up. But no, she wasn't getting worked up. It was actually moving. And this was the most unnerving part of the whole thing. Okay, so you got, like, this giant picture of this. <laughs> giant black figure, shaped hum- like a human, but just massive, with a smaller head kind of tilted to the side. And the only thing that was moving on it at all were the, like arms and the head. And it was very, you know, like pigeons when they move, they look like robotic and stuff. Mm-hmm. It was like that. Like, you know, like it just wasn't normal. And it, it's just hard because it's a dark out and I'm not right up close. I can clearly see that this is what I'm seeing, but it's like, you just keep kind of looking, you know, like this is just not, that, that's not real. But it was, and so 
I'm like, all right, we're done with this. We're gonna, we're not gonna look at it anymore tonight. But I'm, I'm gonna look at it later for sure. Right. <laughs> so I took them back. I'm like, I have to. I don't know what else to do right now. I took them back in the living room and I put on a movie and they all passed out shockingly. No idea how. I didn't sleep all night. Um, once they were sleeping, I went over there and I looked out. This is, I mean, it's been going on for well over an hour, two hours. It, it's hard to tell at this point. You know, I don't really remember much time, but right. um, it's still there. It's still moving. And the weirdest thing came over me because I'm such a chicken and I always thought in a situation like this I would totally like throw up and pass out and that would be like the end of my life. But um, it was not. <laughs> I did something that was super out of character and I opened up the door and I walked outside. And then I, <laughs> I stood like in like the same kind of like stance. You know, people are like, if you got specific types of bears, don't quote me on this. I don't know. You got to make yourself big and scary right, to scare right. the bear. It's the same with ghosts. I, well, that's what I, <laughs> evidently it is, because I'm very scary. <laughs> no, but that's what I did. It just was the only thing in my brain that made sense at the time. I've got three kids. I need to protect them. I don't know what this is. I want it to go. Right. So I have to be scary. I'm so not scary. So I just was scary. I mean, I was literally just like, and just stared at it for, yeah, just. I just didn't back down, you know, I just stared at it for a really long time, and then I got really creeped out, and I realized what I was doing, and I, like, backed up and went in the house, paced around, I went and looked out the window, gone, never saw it again. Wow. That was it. So, that was my 28th birthday. Wow. <laughs> didn't sleep all night, I walked around the house, checking on the kids, making sure they were breathing, like, looking through closets, and, like, just going kind of insane, to be honest. And I'm, I'm fine now, but, you know, for, like, weeks, it was, like... I was just really jumped. Did, did you, you didn't feel anything from it? I did. Yeah. I felt not a not a good thing. Not a good thing? No. I did, it felt... I'm never going to know what it was. And I've well, of course not. That. Of course not. It's just not, you know. And no, there's, there's a lot of people get different things or whatever. So right. I'm always curious. Absolutely. Like, what did it feel like to me? Yeah. Totally demonic. And before, 100%. before you saw it, there was a feeling before you saw it. No. When, you, when you saw the kid's face. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Was it the same or did it get worse when you saw it yourself? It got worse. Okay. So the demonic feeling came from seeing it, and especially when I was out there staring at it, that was pretty intense. Um, seeing the kid's face was just, I mean, they're kids. The yeah. look on their face was too real for them to be, like, having fun with it. They I, were not I, having fun. I they felt that scared. when you when you said that, I felt. Yeah. Felt like, mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. When a kid looks at you, like, with horror, yeah. it's like, there's something's not right, you know? And I knew it at that point, but... So anyway, that happened. Was not expecting that. <laughs> That's crazy. Yep. Wow. And it's something that I love. I really like this kind of stuff. I don't like heights. I don't like roller coasters. That's not my adrenaline rush. It totally comes from, like, scary stories and movies and ghosts and stuff. I mm -hmm. like it. Um, and, like, you know, I don't ever want to see that again, so I don't like it that yeah. much. <laughs> no, there's, there's a, there's, it's a different thing, and it kind of, it lends, in my opinion... It lends itself to that same, that same part of us that enjoys the sadness. Mm -hmm. um, that, because there's no answer to any of it. No. That's the worst thing. Is like the I most, know. the most bizarre supernatural um, Mothman prophecies, for mm -hmm. instance, is one of the most awful things you've ever heard in your life. And there's never an answer to it. Nope. It's just more theories and more yep. ideas. And God forbid you ever experience something like that. But it's something like that. Yeah. It's completely unexpected unexplainable right you just you feel it you see it you know it's real you'll never be able to prove it to anybody else no nope. there's you know it's just this thing that exists and for why why does it exist for? i know why did that have to happen yeah what, for what? does that enrich your existence your life any way shape or form probably not but we don't get to know oh i'm totally happy that happened i'll tell you that oh yeah well because it, it, it validates stuff it, it does. Sort of validates a lot yeah. of stuff. It's like, I, mean, I know what I saw, and there's no going back. I mean, right. actually, you know, once a day, I'm like, did I see it? And it's like, you totally did. You know you did. Yeah. But it's just so unbelievable. It's hard to, it's hard to even, you know, it's hard for me to be real about it. But, no, I'm happy it happened because I didn't know that's how I would react, and I'm proud of myself. <laughs> I don't know if it was because of the kids or not. If it was, whatever. I'm a protector, you know, because that was, that was all that I cared about. I posted the story on Reddit, and the majority of people were like, well... There were a lot of people who were really nice, and they're like, hey, I'm the poltergeist, and I'm like, ah! And then, like, there were a lot of other people that were like, and you didn't get a picture? I was there for two hours, and it's like, I know. Never thought about it. Never thought about it once. I just didn't. You're not in that mind frame. I was not, not, yeah, not yeah, I didn't. Yeah. I wasn't like, oh, I'll take a picture. And you know what? Even if I did think about it, what's it going to do if I snap a photo? I don't know. <laughs> I'm scared, you know? Hey, what if that thing just flies over? I have no idea what's going to happen. 
If it's, I saw it again, I wouldn't take a picture. People disappear it. all the time, and we yeah. never hear nothing about. I think you should. I know. I think you should have posed with the kids. They're yeah. selfie. With selfie. The girls. With the girls. <laughs> <laughs> Their mom comes home. We're all just gone. Yeah, we're just absolutely no. I was like, I need to protect the, the children. <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah. So that's that. I mean, I, I don't know. I think that what people don't understand, if you haven't experienced it, and I wouldn't have understood this until it happened, but the fear is really crippling. It is just, you are so frozen that you're not, you're not concentrating on stuff like that. It's survival. So that was the first experience you ever had with something like that? No, but it was most intense. The other ones are just like, you know, but I, I, I lived in a, um, when I was 19, I moved to LA, um, with a boyfriend and ex-boyfriend now. And, uh, <laughs> we wrote a song about it. I'm kidding. No, no. <laughs> Um, we lived in this apartment and I started having experiences. We didn't have too many, but I've had a few. The first one, and at first they all just happened to me when I was alone. So everyone's like, oh boy. That's, yeah. that's what makes the crazy that's thing the with the story yeah. is when you have, when it's verifiable with somebody else. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's when it becomes I mean, my witnesses are children, but they'll yeah. tell you exactly There's what I told you. So many things that do happen that are those sorts of like, I saw something, I felt something, whatever. Right. They're always dismissed as like, it was a moment. Right. Oh, always. Yep. Versus... When there's somebody else there that experiences right. it with you, and now it's like, oh shit! So yes. you saw that? You saw, you saw that? Right. Okay. Right. And actually, <laughs> going back to that story, the, what, that was one of the craziest parts too, because my brain was just—I couldn't just—I couldn't accept everything. When their mom finally came home, because I, I had texted her, I was like, "Yeah, hey, look at the situation." She's like, "Are you guys okay?" And I downplayed it, because I'm like, "Oh, she's at work. Her kids are with me." I'm like, "No, we're fine." And she's like, "I'm gonna leave her early anyway." I'm like, "Cool." Thank she you. comes home, and I was like, "All right." I was sleeping great, and then I just told her, and she was like, "Oh, I've been having paranormal encounters my whole life." And she's got crazy stories, but um, she's like, "Nothing quite like that." What? Shut That's up. not That's cool. Not yeah, get out of here. You get the medal. Congratulations. So I told her the whole thing. The oldest kid wakes up, and you know, totally half asleep, like not even awake yet. Walks in the room. She hears us talking. Doesn't even say hi to her mom, which is not usual. Goes right up to me and goes, "Is it still out there?" And her mom's like. <laughs> Oh my god! <laughs> I was like, I know. Was and then really you know, her mom goes, "Are you okay? Or, you know, did you, did you see it?" And she gave her the exact same description. Wow. And I'm sleep deprived, and I'm freaking out. And I was like, "Okay, that really did happen. You just woke now. up and said the exact same thing I said." You know, so it's kind of one of those things. It sounds your crazy. Validation right there. Yeah. You're talking right. About. Terrifying. Yeah. It almost sounds like whatever entity it was or whatever follows her around. I know. Well, I mean, that's what people were saying on Reddit. They're like, what if Summer actually looks like that and it disguises itself as like a little girl that hangs out with her? I'm like, I don't know, man. You know, maybe. I have no idea. Maybe See, and that's where you get into the whole like, yeah. intentions. So yeah. spirits, demons, whatever. Right. They have intentions. Yeah. And they're specific to people. They never, you know, it's like, but they don't follow through on shit. They just stand across the yeah. street and act like right. assholes. Yeah, like, they just stare at you like this. Yeah. It seems, seems like they're a real waste of time you. there, demon guy. Why I don't you have to kill like, somebody or something? <laughs> no, There's a possibility dead. that I was freaking out so much more than I think I was that I just annoyed the shit out of it and it left. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I was so brave. It was just like, oh, I hate this person. I gotta go. I gotta go. <laughs> I can take a picture and Hard to say. ask me any questions. Yeah, right. I've been here for four <laughs> hours. <laughs> Bitch, what's going on? I'm just... Oh, she's mean mugging me now. Oh, cool. Yeah. You know what? Oh, she thinks yeah. she's scary. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I was like, take care of that. <laughs> I still am going to go with the... I was very, very intimidating in that moment. Yeah, you scared him. My I scared him. You bared up. I said, look at me. Stick with that. I'm a wild animal. You don't know. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it worked. Hey, if you have an experience like that, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say you should probably not get really freaked out and you should get really brave really fast because it worked for me i've never had i've never had that kind of thing but i have no idea if it'll work for you i mean that's the thing too everyone's like sending me messages like you need sage and salt i know right like like, i was like i'm not gonna do any of that (laughs) at all first and foremost (laughs) your ghost is your ghost and my ghost is my ghost i don't know what you don't know me you don't know my ghost (laughs) i think i would just run away honestly well that's (laughs) what i I would always think that's the thing you don't know until you're in the situation i mean i'm i'm still shocked I went out there. Like, what? That's like what, you know, somebody on Reddit was like, that's like what people do in horror movies. And you're like, why? Exactly. Yeah, exactly. But yeah. it felt right. The killer's so, outside. Let me go yeah, out on the I was patio. Like, I'm going to scare it off. Damn. You were a whole year older. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm a grown up now and I'll kick your ass. Yeah. <laughs> Get on my porch with yourself. Really that's my advice to it. Did you write a song about it yet? I'm not, I actually, not about this experience, (laughs) not about this experience, but this is just a crazy and awesome coincidence. So yeah, we talk about ghosts, you know, here and there, not all the time, but you know, me and and the kid's mom, my friend, um, because of her situation. Mm -hmm. And we were in a group chat with our other good friend and 
she was like, oh, I had this horrible situation. I'm getting really tired of it. I feel bad for the kids. They're having more experiences. And, you know, we kind of lighten the mood. I'm like, what, what if this ghost, what if you could be friends with it? Get it to clean a little bit while you're at work. Tuck in the girls. Like, maybe it's not that bad. Um, you know, maybe it's cute. Maybe it'll be your boyfriend. You know, mm-hmm. my friend goes, <laughs> my other friend, she's like, it could be your boo. Ha, <laughs> 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 ha, She's really quick. She's really quick with that. But, um... <laughs> I, it took me like a whole like 10 seconds to be like, oh, I have to write a song about it. I'll be right back. And then I had it. So I wrote one song and then I was like, what if I take this further and I write a bunch of songs about it? Oh, and now I'm like working on like a rock opera for a lack of a better term. About your boo? About, about your boo. yeah. Well, it's, yeah. Long, uh, the very simple version because there's a lot going on with it. And I honestly, I'm really in the early stages of this, but I am, I am actually going to, I'm planning on finishing this and making it happen, but it's uh, about a girl that moves into an apartment. It's haunted. She doesn't believe it. And then when she finally summons this thing, she falls in love with him. It's my wow. girl. <laughs> and I wrote a lot of songs about that. If you'd like to hear one. I think you should. Yeah, what do you mean? That's awesome. I'm starting to, yeah, I know. It, it sounds really cheesy, and it probably no, it is, brilliant. but yeah. I, I like really Twilight, guess. but a lot more swearing, and they'll probably be like drunk use. I just <laughs> I can pick for you. It's nice and creepy. Oh, yeah. This is called I Don't Believe in Ghosts. <laughs> I feel like someone's watching me. Standing at the edge of my bed. Moving close, studying every move I make, it's so intrigued I feel like I am on display Just like a performer on a stage I'm not alone, I'm not afraid Is this real or have I gone insane? I don't believe, I don't, I don't I don't believe in ghosts I don't believe, I don't, I don't I don't believe in ghosts Ghosts The shower turns on when I'm asleep I pull the covers up to my cheeks Flip on a light, say hello No response, assume it was a dream Cause I don't believe, I don't, I don't I don't believe in ghosts I don't believe, I don't, I don't I don't believe in ghosts I don't I see shadows on the wall I hear voices down the hall I feel fingers through my hair And it startles me I'm not scared I'm in denial obviously If there's no ghost what could it be And I'm pacing back and forth for now And I'm questioning my sanity Questioning my sanity because I don't believe, I don't, I don't I don't believe in ghosts I don't believe, I don't, I don't I don't believe in ghosts I don't believe, I don't, I don't I don't believe in ghosts And goes. Very cool. I like that. I like Isn't that weird that I. Yeah, you like that? that? No, that's awesome. Ghost story? Yeah. And he's like, just like, he's a chill ghost, you know? <laughs> but still creepy. No, it's just, it's, it's, it's it, it probably makes my story seem even less believable. And I don't really care because it happened. So, um, it just did. There's no, you can't even tell me it didn't. But it's weird that I wrote that song and then had that experience like a month or so later 
Oh, after. oh, it happened after the fact. After. Oh wow. Yeah. This, wow. this. I wrote this song first. I got the idea. Yeah, no, I don't believe you, brother. I know. I know. It just makes it sound so like okay. Well, you're right about ghosts, and out. then you saw a ghost. Oh, I can't wait to hear the love song that comes out of it. Oh, right. there's already one. So maybe the ghost hunter should go do a uh, hunt over there. Oh, we should not. Her house. Hell yeah! That'd, that'd Actually, cool. if you guys are having them in here. If you want me to swing by with my creepy friend that has all these experiences, I know for a fact she would totally get in here. Would, I'd, 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 she appreciate you calling her your creepy friend, but... <laughs> she would love it. She knows. Yeah. When all the games I explode. Time. I literally just called her that earlier. I was like, guess what I'm going to do? Talk about the story. And she was like, oh, gosh. I'm like, if somebody wanted to ask you questions, like on a podcast, would you do it just in case? And she's like, yeah, all right. She's gonna have oh, to you're do, so creepy. She's got to do the whole, you know, fix the later face and the... <laughs> right. No, I mean, she's, she has crazy <laughs> stories. I'd actually, even just to meet them, that'd be... Maybe good for her. We might have to do a whole episode just on that. Yeah. You know. Are you guys going to do an alien segment? I'll tell you what. We should. In the next, sure. within the next, within within the next year, within the next year, there's going to be there's going to be some definitive shit going on. Because all this stuff that happened off the coast, and they're having hearings on it now, and like yeah. people in higher places are starting to ask questions. It's going to get to the point where if there is any real information, they're not going to be able to suppress it any longer. Because it's just, it's becoming mainstream. <laughs> how, can logic, how can we logically think that how, how big the universe is? How, how can we think that we're the only ones out there? So what you're witnessing here is previews of shows to come. Yes. Yeah, you yeah we are, really touched on you're some gonna topics. Edit it. Oh, Psychology, we're gonna we were on Ghost, and, my and career. I have a feeling Julia is going to be a permanent part of our cast now. <laughs> I so. sure am. <laughs> what about any exciting what projects you? you have coming up other than the or where do you film, play, Where can they find you regularly? Um, see you live. What? Where can we see you live regularly? Oh, regularly. Um, my gigs switch up, but every Saturday I'm at the living room uh, in Chandler, and it's on Queen Creek Road. Uh, yeah, it's not my living room. My room. <laughs> no, no. I'm in Joey's living room every Saturday. Come on now. Woo! Uh, it's just the living room. And it's like, you know. No, I really love that spot. I'm there every Saturday, 3 to 6. It's great. Cool. Um, and so, you know, I post everything. There are other gigs. They're, you know. So not so, social media is a, good, is a good tool. Yeah, you. definitely. <laughs> yeah, so we'll put a link to your website. Yes. For sure. Please find me. Absolutely. Yes. And thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, boys. Yeah, I'll be fun. back. All, All right. <laughs> that was really fun. We just gained like 10 topics we could talk about, too. Yeah. That was really fun for me. It was just all stuff I had.